All right, well, continuing on with my uh, rechargeable homemade uh, batteries. I uh, was very successful with this battery right here, which I showed in my last video. It is um, mildly magnetic stainless, has a lot of nickel in it, with a highly magnetic stainless pot scrubber with lead with holes in it. And it runs, uh, runs this oscillator real good. And I did a lot of extensive testing with that cell with different oscillators, charging and discharging, and finally filled up the holes with the uh, with the red lead. And uh, that made it a lot more powerful and it had a lot more amperage, um, amper hours to it. So off I went, continuing on, and these are the uh, distilled water and alum with the lead. And then now I'm, I switched over to looking at stainless steel. And so I went one step further and I thought, well, let me try something else. I'm just going to, because I took one of these apart and looked at it. There wasn't anything going on with the negative plate here. Uh, positive plate, uh, we'll see, but negative plate was just acting kind of benign. So I went one step further and I tried this. This is a, a, a table knife, flatware, made out of this stainless steel that's very magnetic. It probably has 13% or 17% chrome with the steel and probably very little nickel because it's so magnetic. So I made a cell like this with this is the positive, this is the negative, and I put the red lead between the two using the distilled water and alum. And it was a very, very good cell, and I charged, discharged, and kept checking it for days and days. And uh, once again, when I took it apart, this remained okay. This formed a brown coating on it, as expected, but the stainless steel was okay. It had a crystalline structure of the alum and the um, sponge lead. It looked gray, so I thought, well... I wonder if I could just get away with eliminating the lead and just go with all stainless steel. And I did that today. And that's two table knives. They're both stainless steel. And they're this uh, cheap China stainless steel that's very, very magnetic. Has a lot of chromium in it, perhaps, or 17 or so percent or 13 percent, but probably no nickel. So anyway, I formed up a cell with uh, using the red lead and then uh, put the red lead all over these knife blades and separated the knife blades with the blue paper, the separator, and then uh, got it wet with the distilled water and alum mixture. And it, uh, it formed up and it'll run something. Let me show you, it'll run this motor. This is really for a ton and John and Chuck, um, <laughs> you know how hard this little motor is to run, how many milliamps it takes to run. And there it goes. Doesn't run very long. But watch, when it's done doing that, I can come over here and put it on this thing here. And it'll run that for a long time. And I believe this is this uh, impedance matching that you've been trying to teach us, is you need something on the load that is in conjunction with the impedance of the battery. And when you match those up, when you get the impedance on the, the load matched up slightly higher than the impedance on the battery, that's when the magic happens. So anyway, I just wanted to show folks what I'm doing here. I don't think this is anything more than perhaps a very unusual galvanic battery um, because when I take this apart I see the rust color on the positive uh, plate here which indicates to me that perhaps I've got the ion exchange going between the metals and not the back and forth with the uh, SO4 but it's very interesting and uh, the fact that it's rechargeable at least perhaps during its short lifetime I thought was very interesting so I thought I would share that with folks. This was the all stainless steel homemade rechargeable battery. Thanks for watching.